Hi you guys, my name is Brittany and welcome back to my YouTube channel. You guys, in today's video, I will be giving you my mid-year curriculum update for my kindergartner and my preschooler. I'm really, really excited about today's video. If any of you guys are new here to my channel, again, my name is Brittany. I'm a homeschooling mom to three girls and I'm in my fourth year of homeschool. So you guys, we're gonna go ahead and kickstart off my kindergartners mid-year curricular review. I definitely will say before I give you guys my recap of like the curricula that we use and how I'm feeling about it so far, I definitely will say starting off a kiddo from the beginning is completely different from starting off homeschooling with a child that does have some type of public school experience. So for me, for my oldest daughter, I didn't start homeschooling her officially until the start of her third grade year. So I didn't have to go through the process of teaching my daughter how to read and how to, you know, beginning forming her letters and really from the beginning, I always supplemented my uh, oldest daughter's education at home where I would grab like workbooks and things we would do. We would do like reading and math facts and sight words at home, but I never was like the true full on facilitator of her soul education. So it definitely was very daunting for me when I started off this homeschooling journey from the beginning with my middle daughter. Um, I really didn't know what to expect. I definitely wanted to keep kindergarten like fun and light, especially since in the state of Georgia, I don't have to register her in the um, board of education until she turns six. So until her first grade year will be the year that I officially um, have to follow all of our state guidelines and, you know, protocol and things like that. I really just wanted to get my feet wet when it comes to like kindergarten, even though I do have some small goals that I do want us to reach at the end of our homeschooling year. I definitely didn't want to put too much pressure on myself when it came to her. Uh, this particular daughter, my middle daughter, she definitely has a few special needs that I do have to keep in mind. For my middle daughter, Leia, she actually was not speaking at all. I mean, no words when she was two years old. So literally, when I think about the fact that my daughter that wasn't speaking three years ago is now beginning to read, it like blows my mind, um, all the progress that we've went through with her. I mean, speech therapy and testing. Um, it just was so much stuff when it came to her and so much worry and so much concern. And I definitely will say that um, as I've been going through this process with her, it definitely has been more of a roller coaster because I'm worried if we're not meeting those developmental things or if we're not where we're supposed to be with her because I wanna get it just right. But I do have to remember from which my daughter came from and how much progress she has made uh, really from the beginning. And I'm, I'm just floored. I can't believe we're where we're at. I'm really, really excited. And I really want to encourage any of you guys out there, if you are homeschooling some type of kiddo with some type of special need or special circumstance, don't give up on that kiddo. Be consistent with them. It's been several times, I'm not gonna lie, this year that I have doubted my ability to teach my middle daughter. It's been times where I'm like, well, maybe she may be better off if I do uh, do public education with her and she'll have, you know, an IEP. She'll have her speech therapy in school. And, you know, it's been several times I have allowed myself to go there. But now we are at like mid-year, I'm really happy with where we're at. I can't believe that I have been the one to facilitate this. And did we make as much progress as I wanted to? Absolutely not. But did we make progress from the beginning of our school year to now? Absolutely. And I think I'm just gonna continue to truck along this journey with this kiddo. And I can't wait to see all the things that Leia is gonna do and gonna get up to. And I'm so proud of this girl. So you guys, <laughs> now that I finished my old emotional spill, we're gonna go ahead and get into the curriculum for her. We're gonna start off with math. Math is actually one of her favorite subjects and her primary math we've been using has been kindergarten math with confidence, you guys. 
And I have been loving this curriculum so much for Leia. Leia has been loving this curriculum as well. Um, I really like the playfulness of this curriculum. I love the games that it incorporates daily. Um, the little activities like her learning her left and her right. And um, it's just really, really fun the way that they are teaching these math concepts. Her mental math is awesome at this point. The way that they're solidifying uh, her being able to analyze numbers zero to 10. Um, I really, really like the incorporation of the manipulatives. Um, she loves that as well. I love that they have her jumping and hopping and, you know, we're doing little chants and singing and it really has been a fun curriculum. One thing I definitely will say that I thoroughly appreciate is that in Math with Confidence, they have these unit checkpoints where it really allows you to be able to assess your kids and where they're at. They don't give them like a specific like assessment that they're doing, but you're able to read and see, okay, is my kiddo understanding and grasping the concepts? Is my kiddo where they need to be at? And it also encourages you for specific areas like they're not looking for math flat, fat fluency at this level. And it really gives you, I guess, those like reminders that this is kindergarten math and you know, this is where your kid needs to be. This is how you know we can move on to the next unit. And if they're not ready, here goes some games you can review view. Here goes the page numbers you can do before moving on to the next unit. And I really enjoy that handholding that Math with Confidence gives me. I love that it's scripted. And I do love the simple take on math. Um, sometimes, I'm not going to lie, I do question whether it is enough rigor uh, for math and it is what I'm really looking for in a math curriculum. But at this level, I am enjoying the in-depthness that it's going. Um, so I really have been enjoying um, the math with confidence. One thing about the workbook that I love is I love that it has like the daily practice when it comes to like the number writing. So every single day, she does get daily practice. Um, they have a black line master at the back of the um, teacher's guide that gives you, um, I guess, like the little dry, uh, the page where you can put in a dry erase sleeve so they can practice their numbers daily. And before we start our math lesson, I have been having my daughter practice her numbers daily. Uh, so she's getting that fluency when it comes to writing her numbers. So I don't really have to depend on our handwriting curriculum when it comes to her learning how to write her numbers. It's kind of like all encompassing in the kindergarten math with confidence, which has been great. Um, I really have been enjoying that. So kindergarten math with confidence, again, is our primary math curriculum right now we are on i believe we're we're a little bit like we're about two-thirds away through this curriculum um i think we'll be finished with it by the end of february early march is what we're going to be at so when we start off our school year uh in in like the second week of january i believe we're either going to start back january 8th or we're going to start back after Martin Luther King Day. I'm still trying to decide if we're going to take an extended break because this is our first like full on uh, break that we have taken since summertime. So I do want to give my kiddos enough time. And I want to give myself enough time to really plan and prep for our upcoming year. So um, I definitely will say whether it be the 8th or the day after Martin Luther King Day, uh, she's going to be coming in on Unit 7, which is week 2. 21 out of 32 is where we're going to be starting off when it comes to math with confidence. So uh, I've been enjoying this and um, the picture books have been great. At the end, when I do give my end of the year review on kindergarten math with confidence, I will highlight all of her favorite math picture books that she has enjoyed. And I'll try my best to check them out from the library again so I can share them with you guys. But the math picture books have been good. Not all of them are her hits, but I definitely will highlight her favorite. So along with Kindergarten Math with Confidence, we also have been using Matthew C. Primer. You guys, she loves the blocks in Matthew C. Primer. And a lot of you guys, your question you always ask me all the time is, how am I doing two math curriculums with a kindergartner? And I will say, we typically use Matthew C. Primer either as like her morning work and her morning pages. So before we actually sit down in the homeschool room together uh, when we're kind of like at the dining room table before we start breakfast while my oldest is doing math. Sometimes I work on handwriting practice with her and we will do one or two sheets of math 
or one or two sheets of Matthew C primer with her before I do like her formal lesson. So we kind of use this as like a warm up in her mornings and or we would do it in late afternoon. So it just depends on the time and that we do do um, the Matthew C primer. We definitely always do Matthew C on Fridays because Math with Confidence is a strictly four day a week uh, schedule. They do have the enrichment exercise at the end of the week which is typically the book and some type of fun activity one of my uh, daughter's absolute fun activity was our last one when we played store with the kindergarten math with confidence i had my oldest daughter set up like a whole store in her bedroom and i gave her dimes nickels and pennies and she had to be able to like give my oldest change we have a little play cash register so that was like a big hit when it came to like uh, the enrichment activities. But since we do the enrichment activities on Friday, um, we usually do our math you see lesson always on Friday. And typically when this is our primary math, she wants to do more than one page. So right now in math you see, um, we are on week 15, which is about the halfway point of this curricula. Uh, one thing I will say is since my daughter is getting the handwriting practice in the Math with Confidence, when it comes to math, you see it doesn't have as much handwriting practice opportunities. So she's able to really, I guess, write those numbers out. And it's really been fun seeing her uh, write her numbers really, really well. So I'm really proud about her progress when it comes to that. So as far as her uh, reading instruction, we have been using All About Reading Level 1. And I definitely will say that this is a great reading program. It's scripted. It's definitely for kinesthetic learners. I mean, you got your manipulatives with the uh, letter tiles. We actually use the app letter tiles and I typically uh, do it with her on the computer right here. I do have other types of letters that I can use if we do wanna like pull them out as well for a variety instead of just always using the letter tile app, but she does love the letter tile app. Um, so it has that. It has a lot of activities in the activity book uh, that she can do to really practice that fluency when it comes to like her reading. And um, I like the fact that when we do get stuck on a lesson in the back of this all about reading, they have like a whole appendix of like different games and different things and suggestions if you hit like roadblocks when it comes with the your kiddo and teaching them reading instruction. Um, I don't know if it's the program or it's my daughter. More than likely, it's my daughter. <laughs> um, like I said before, we are going extremely slow in this curriculum. We have been working in this curriculum since the end of July. And from July until December, we only have completed seven out of, I believe, the 53 lessons which is not a lot. My goal for this curriculum at the beginning of the school year was to do half of it, which was about 27 lessons I wanted to complete. So we're not quite at my goals halfway point when it comes to the all about reading. And sometimes I do question the effectiveness of this program for her. However, I'm starting to realize, you know, some kiddos when it comes to reading instruction, they either get it fast or they, they take a long time, like how my daughter is taking. Um, as far as like her reading and her fluency, she's definitely getting there. We have uh, been working primarily on uh, CVC words with the short A sound up until lesson seven. And when we get into lesson eight, we will begin working on the short I sound. Um, so I definitely will say when it comes to those CVC words, she definitely is getting more fluent with them. We use the uh, green cards and um, I've been doing everything you guys as far as what they've been teaching me in the all about reading to do as far as her reading and it definitely has been working um the this little book right here the run bug run book is really really cute it has a lot of cute stories the stories you guys are actually really really cute and engaging and i like that in the all about reading book they do have comprehension questions that i do ask her um they also have this cute little viewfinder that uh especially for this kiddo sometimes she does get distracted i like having this viewfinder um when she's reading the words and um it's been going well. Um, what I did do when we came to like those points where I couldn't necessarily move on to the next lesson, we were practicing the fluency sheets and things like that. Um, I definitely added in Explode the Code for her. We are doing Explode the Code uh, 1. And it's so crazy how well Explode the Code combines with All About Reading because most of these words right here in Explode the Code are those high frequency words in All About Reading 
reading and it really solidified those things that she was learning in all about reading. So when we were at those points where we couldn't necessarily move forward, I was able to pull out this Explode the Code and we were able to really solidify those um, learning uh, curves for her. So I'm happy with All About Reading, but you guys, sometimes I do question whether or not another reading curriculum may suit her better. But I think I'm going to go ahead, you guys, and probably for the rest of this year, I'm going to go ahead and commit to All About Reading and continue to work with it. Um, but if I do, if I will say, um, I guess me switching reading programs, I do have two in mind that if All About Reading doesn't work at the end of the year and I find I need to switch, I am looking into either a Becca phonics or logic of English are the other two phonics programs for this particular child that I will switch to for her first grade year if I'm finding we're not having the success that I'm looking for in all about reading but for the remaining of this school year I have decided to continue to commit to this um, I find when it comes to reading and reading instruction is definitely not good to just jump and bounce around you definitely want to give your kids consistency when it comes to this and I found myself when I began to do more consistent lessons with Leia meaning including the weekends like on uh, Saturdays and Sundays I would spend like maybe five or ten minutes uh, having her practice some of the letters on my phone like the letter tile app or we would uh, read maybe some of the books in our Bob books or we would reread the stories in here just for like maybe five ten minutes on a daily basis that's when I was seeing the most growth with her when it came to her phonics instruction and I think now that we are you know back into our new semester in our new year I think I'm just going to go ahead and give her phonics instructions daily and see if that does make a big difference when it's coming to like the progress that I'm seeing um, in her written instruction. I know for some people they may think that that's overkill, but on the weekend, especially doing like those five, 10 minute snippets, it definitely allowed her brain still to be fresh. So when we came back in Monday, um, she didn't feel, I didn't feel like she completely, you know, lost it from, <laughs> you know, Friday. So that's something I'm definitely going to be doing. Doing, uh, as we're starting our new semester with her with her phonics instruction so uh, that is like Leia's core as far as handwriting goes you guys we are doing handwriting without tears I was not consistent with handwriting without tears when we first started off our school year I began to be more consistent with it in November and she, you guys like her capital letters she is doing really really well the only letters in her capital letters that she still is struggling with is J K and I think it's Z are the only letters that um, she's not as fluent with. So we're going to practice our capital letters. And I believe we're going to go ahead and begin with the lowercase letters soon in this kickstart uh, for Handwriting Without Tears book. I also already have the orange book, which is the official kindergarten book. And once we finish this one, we'll go into that one. I'm not really in any rush to like rush her through the handwriting. I definitely want to make sure she gets it. Um, it's concise. We're doing our strokes the right way because I definitely don't want to do any like back math where I have to correct any of the things she's doing wrong. I'd rather take our time with the handwriting, make sure she got it good. And we kind of will continue to go on from there. So that is how she is doing in handwriting. So that is my five-year-olds, my kindergartners lineup as far as her core. As far as history and science this year, you guys, I really have been very loosey-goosey. She has primarily been getting a lot of her history and science from our homeschool hangouts that we've been doing. Um, she's learned a lot about like volcanoes and so many insects and so many different things as far as science. When it has come to the homeschool hangouts, we have done a few countries and cultures homeschool hangouts. And I mean, for the most part, whatever she's getting, she's getting. I really don't have a state guideline for science and social studies just yet until I get to first grade. So right now, while I don't have that pressure on myself, I'm not putting the pressure on myself when it comes to science or social studies for my kindergartner. I'm focusing on the core, whatever she gets outside of our, I guess, instructional time when it comes to the hangouts or her fun reads that we're reading. That's just a bonus for me. Um, I'm not worrying about it till I got to. <laughs> so that's my kindergartner. Now, as far as my preschooler, you guys, we've been doing some of the similar things. She's been working on the get set for the code. She finished the A book and now we're on the B book. This again just solidifies those consonant letter sounds. She's doing great as far as that. Um, my 
last daughter she actually just turned four and I think I'm gonna get a little bit more serious with her because she is definitely ready to take on more school um, she gets mad at me when her school is over <laughs> because she sees I do spend more time with her um, older two sisters to really be honest um, and I definitely want to be more intentional with my baby girl I do want to make school fun for her and I want to give her more school so I definitely know I may make a few changes as far as bumping her up because I definitely see she's ready for it. As far as her preschool math at home, uh, we are, you see I have my little bookmark here, we are halfway done with preschool math at home. I did this program last year with Leia and she enjoyed it. This is just hands-on fun activities um, that we do and they're really simple. I mean, they last like two, three minutes at max. So because she wants more school, what I did was I already had this on PDF file. This is JDA's um, be preschooler or beginner math and We've been working through this, you guys, and it's so cute. I mean, it just has simple math skills that she's doing, and she loves when I pull out this book. I mean, she's going over shapes, numbers, uh, length. She goes over everything, and I definitely feel like this is just something fun that is really leading her up and preparing her for kindergarten math with confidence. We're about halfway through with this one. So when we finish both of these math programs, you guys, I'm definitely going to go ahead and start kindergarten math with confidence with her. I already have the workbook. So maybe in March, if she finishes these, because she definitely is going at a faster pace, I definitely will go ahead and start her math uh, and or we will probably just start her kindergarten math with confidence in summertime leading up into the new school year. So it just depends. As far as her handwriting um, goes, I mean, she just turned four, you guys. So I really haven't focused much on it. I just want to make sure she's coloring like in the lines and holding the pencil right and doing things like that. So what I'm going to go ahead and do for her is we're going to go ahead and start the first handwriting without tears books with just I mean, this book is so cute, you guys. It really just goes over like the beginning strokes. I mean, it's so cute. I really enjoyed using this book last year with Leia when she was four and learning like the beginning strokes and things like that. It's really, really gentle when it comes to handwriting. So I definitely think Leia's ready. I mean, not Leia, Alana, my baby girl, she's ready to go ahead and start um, her first handwriting without tears book. Now, as far as reading instruction with Alana, Alana is four and she's working on CVC words along with Leia. She's doing a really, really good job. What I use for her as far as working on CVC words has been Elemental Phonics, which, I mean, they just give us a list of CVC words. We just practice them daily. And towards the end of this book, they're going to have her reading like these little short sentences. Um, I really take a lot of things that I'm learning in all about reading and teaching her. Um, and some days she wants to do her CVC words, some days she does and I really don't like put too much pressure on her but um she definitely has a desire to learn how to read and I definitely think uh I probably will start formal reading instruction with her sooner than later uh, especially for this kiddo because she's definitely ready for it so that is my baby girl my four-year-old's update when it comes to like the things that I'm doing with her her school lasts anywhere between like 15 minutes but she definitely wants more. <laughs> so I definitely need to prepare more like fun hands-on things for both of my younger kiddos and really start back like messy art Fridays and doing all those little, you know, things that I have done in the past this upcoming year. Those are definitely goals of mine. So you guys, I really hope you enjoyed just chatting with me and talking about all of the curriculum that I have been using for my kindergartner and my preschooler. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And as always, I look forward to seeing everybody in my next one. Bye.